That's always the most difficult question because there's no answer. You know, I don't even know, <laughs> honestly. That's my honest answer. <laughs> um, what can I say? I think it's really similar to what I just said, though. Like those three things, you know, I think that's the key attitude you love to actually um, really, really keep and maintaining. It really depends on what you are struggling with. If you are struggling with some technical stuff, you just want to be better at this, but you know, it's, it's really hard, right? But even though it seems really hard, I think you should keep doing it. <laughs> like only way to you know, learn how to make film or only way to learn how to animate or draw, you just draw and make films, you know? So that's like a textbook sentence, but that's, it is true, you know? There's no other way. It's not like you can read or there's no shortcut to really do that. Second of all, if you are struggling with your own storyline or, or as an artist, like, you know, what do I like to tell? Where am I going with this technique or, or stuff I learned? Then I should just tell them to just take a break and then maybe take on a walk or go to a journey or trip to other countries, go to the gallery and have fun out there. And then, then you know, when you give yourself a little room, that's when things come back to you. Oh, this is actually, and all the unnecessary things will be filtered out and just the core will be left. And that may be the answer to your question or answers to really help you out getting out of your own slump. Again, the same thing, it may sound very abstract, but that's how, how I really personally go through and that's how I really actually deal with those type of things. So it's not like me, you know, coming from above, like telling young artists, it's not like that. That's how I do it too, because I am not really different from you guys. I struggle as well. So every time I feel that way, I just really follow those two things, you know, yeah. So my art is very personal. Like those of you who are familiar with my personal work will probably agree with me. You know, it's not a just beautiful painting. I sometimes, I'm not afraid of going to the little more darker part of, because life, it can be beautiful, but ugly as hell. You know, it's very, that's what our life is. So I love to actually depict that, those two sides of life as clear as possible. That's what I think about, you know, when I paint or draw. Like, you know, what life is this? You know, what do I go through when I'm sad? Why am I sad about? Why am I angry? You know, I really try my best to be honest to my emotion and thought or whatever that is. So I think that's the biggest thing I think about when I paint or draw. It's really interesting because even if I, I don't know, I mean, just to really answer your question, just keep believing you. <laughs> Keep doing whatever you want and try to just have fun, you know, just don't think too much I know there are things that you really care and then things you feel like it's the most important thing in your life It's it's right, right? Just follow what you like to actually do at that moment and then just go even more crazy, you know, with it because that's how you document yourself as if it's a diary, you know, or it's an artwork, whatever just leave no regret back there so that that was a little too cheesy but you know and that's actually probably what i want to tell students and artists as well like younger artists you know just go crazy you know don't think too much just draw paint go on uh, just you know whatever you do that's how you learn your life you know yeah yeah in the end of the day um, there shouldn't be any boundaries between digital versus analog painting. The core has been, is always the same. So as long as you know what you're doing with your medium, just don't be confused or tricked by this digital medium. You need to know how to control that. So like knowing how to control this medium is the same, you know, watercolor, the pure analog watercolor, oil painting versus oil painting and digital, the mistake that can be made in the middle is actually being tricked by what you're seeing, you know? <laughs> because it's so easy to just follow, oh, it looks actually cool, I'm just gonna do this. It's so one little mistake you may actually, you know, make on your way. So, like, of course, knowing how to actually paint in real life minimize that type of error because what you do literally just shows up you know, on your canvas or paper directly. Like you cannot blame on computer or a computer doesn't do anything for you. 
But even the computer, using computer or digital, the idea should stay the same. You see that too, like really, really talented artists, whatever they get, like one single paper, pencil, or like super expensive Wacom tablet, same, right? So I think that's the most ideal goal you want to achieve. Yeah, that's what I believe. Dragon. I love dragon. Unicorns are pretty, but dragons are cooler, so I'd rather fly on the dragon. Yeah. Um, it's not like just to the students or aspiring artists, just to everybody out there who does art. I want you guys to be more you. You know, I want more original ideas here and there. And then that way we can just inspire each other. I, I mean, it's great that there's a, such a thing as we, we call trend. You know, there's always trend. Everyone imitates each other, anything like that. Oh, that's actually good as well because it actually makes the movement together. But like seeing more, more of diversity in art, that really inspires me. And I love seeing everyone influencing each other with their own voice as well. So I think that way we can actually grow together like in a very positive, good way, you know? So yeah, that's what I love to actually say the last time, yeah.